Hi, my name is Ashwin. I'm a 22-year-old music journalist from Oxford. And since it's Mental Health Awareness Week, I thought I'd just do a quick video about the idea of um, mental health stigma, romanticisation, and how that sort of crosses over into music. Uh, so, the idea of mental health uh, romanticisation is the idea that there is something beneficial or beautiful about suffering from a mental illness of some sort. I use that term somewhat loosely because while I do self-identify as having a mental illness with anxiety and depression, that label does get used towards things that really shouldn't apply to, like um, you know, being autistic, which is seen as somehow being a bad thing when it's clearly not at all. Um, that's a completely different issue. But yeah, so a lot of my artists uh, that I've liked over the years um, have suffered with mental health issues or still are suffering and in some cases have even taken their own lives as a result of having mental health issues so ones I can think of off the top of my head it's like Ian Curtis, Nick Drake, Elliot Smith, Kurt Cobain and Mark from Sparkle Horse and a lot of these artists did write very sad melancholic music with some very blunt messages about uh, their mental state at the time, but I don't think that necessarily means that it's a sort of cry for attention or something that should have been looked at the time. A lot of these people, when they died, um, their fans will sort of, sort of uh, will look through their music to see if there was any sort of warning sign, and I think that's something that's quite a natural response when you, someone particularly that you know has died and you want to think of any sort of warning signs that weren't um, immediately obvious and apparent. Um, but I don't necessarily think that that's a romanticisation because I think that's generally what they were feeling at the time or what are, who, what those people are feeling now. Um, and I think, you know, the, the more you can share that with people, the better. And I don't think anyone who uh, listens to that necessarily thinks that, like, oh, being sad and depressed and having uh, poor mental health is something to aspire to. Um, something quite interesting that people have made a point of is the idea that, oh, you shouldn't really listen to sad music and stuff because it's going to make you feel worse and it's going to, um, you know, you, you, no wonder you feel this way for having an X reason for feeling this way you know, with all the shit sad music that you listen to, mate. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that... Um, I think that, you know... Uh, people can identify and have catharsis with music and it doesn't necessarily mean either that they are going to go to those extremes that the, the, the things that people are talking about in the songs um, if if anyone's particularly interested there's a film called Frank which is uh, it's a fictional film but essentially it's about all these artists who go to this cabin in the woods and record for 18 months um, and without spoiling it too much, the kind of basis and st uh, message from that film is you don't need to necessarily be sad or have something traumatic um, or to have to romanticise personal things to make good art. And I think that's a really important distinction to make because um, a lot of music is, you know, it is very sad and melodramatic. Even all the music I write, I know that even though my mental health isn't the best, uh, I look back on it in sort of rationality and uh, decisiveness and think, okay, well, what I was writing at the time probably does seem a bit over the top, but I know in my mind that, you know, it was something to get down on paper and express to people at times. It doesn't necessarily mean that, like, you know, I want people to follow in my footsteps or uh, aspire to this. Um, there was something quite interesting recently. The editor of Kerrang!, James McMahon, um, he basically, I don't even know if he was being entirely serious about this, but he essentially said like, oh, just because, um, you know, don't, don't make music about being sad if you haven't been bullied or really experienced things. It's like, it's a really horribly close-minded thing to say. Uh, if it was a joke, it, it's a really fucking just stupid joke to make because, you know, this is not something you should want to fuck around with. Um, one of my favourite artists, Mount Erie, recently... Well, this is very different circumstances because this whole record is about um, him coming to grips with the fact that his wife died of cancer. One of the first lines from the first track is, Death is real, 
someone's there and they're then they're not, and it's not for singing about, and it's not for making into art. And I think um, death and sadness. I, I think in his circumstance it's kind of ironic because he is actually making an entire album about his grief but I think the message behind that was sort of it's not something to be taken lightly and I think it's still something that's up for debate I think there's plenty of artists where you can um, be over dramatic and sad and it works in the context of a song and I don't think you necessarily have to find deep meanings or relate to the song in the most personal way possible to get your sense of enjoyment out of it because at the end of the day it is your sense of enjoyment um, I just find it a bit interesting that sort of mi music gets a bit of a free pass on stigmatization of mental health and romanticization when literature and TV and films and other sort of consumerist arts um, gets a bit of slack for it. And I'm not saying uh, you know it's, I necessarily agree or disagree with that, but I think it's a really interesting point to make, um, especially when it comes to having things to cope with your mental health and I think it's very subjective to say that this you know these artists are just going to make you feel worse and these ones aren't sad enough for you and if you're not uh, if you're not listening to this and you're not going through the same things and you haven't gone through a particularly traumatic thing you're not allowed to be sad about it you're not allowed to necessarily listen to that music which is uh, really 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 just no not an okay thing to promote to people but um yeah i would love to hear what you guys have to say about it i only really touched on a few things here but um like i said it's mental health awareness week and i thought i'd just make a quick youtube video about it so yeah cheers dudes <laughs>